today I'm presenting preliminary results of a project we've been involved for two years. Uh, Colombia stands out as one of the world's most diverse countries, a distinction known to uh, its diverse range of climate and its uh, high biodiversity is fostered for by many environmental conditions that give rise to several ecosystems, spanning from lowland tropical dry forests to middle elevation cloud forests and high altitude paramount. The Caribbean region is considered as one of the most vulnerable areas in Colombia and among its main threats are unsustainable carbon farming and planned carbon development and the impact of climate change. So this map illustrates the remaining few hectares of forest and as you can see are uh, very few. And please keep in mind the tropical dry forest, mangrove ecosystem and the Sierra Nevada de Santa Marta. So I would like to highlight the significance of mangroves as a very important ecosystem. Uh, they play a important role as nature-based solutions to climate change. And in the Caribbean, they are habitats of endemic species, to the neotropic, uh, for instance, Felicera Ventami. Uh, this is our team working on mangroves. Um, this seasonally dry tropical forest is a remarkable ecosystem that displays impressive plant adaptations to seasonality. For instance, for the synthetic parks, it is the Bomba septenatum and the seedlessness to prevent water loss, Savanilesia platanifolia. And as Alvaro was telling us yesterday, uh, is a super endangered ecosystem. The ecoregion of the Sierra Nevada de Santa Marta is an isolated mountain in the Colombian Caribbean and rising up to 5,700 meters above sea level. It is the tallest peak in Colombia and the tallest coastal mountain in the world. And owing to its unique location, isolation, and complex topography, it is an endemic hotspot. So recognizing that the Colombian Caribbean is a complex territory, we selected seven threatened species, uh, Paquira quinata, Dividivia puntata, Androanthus coralibe, Perocarpus acapultensis, and Aspidosperma from the tropical dry forest, Clavija Sante Marte from the Sierra Nevada, and Feliciera, a mangrove species, uh, to strengthen their population. So once we selected the species, uh, we needed to integrate a multidisciplinary approach, including taxonomy, niche model, uh, and actually finding the plan. You know, sometimes it's not that easy. Uh, and phenology, collecting the seeds, propagation, community engagement, uh, planting actions, ex situ conservation and in situ conservation. So as Colin was sharing with us yesterday, taxonomy is very important. Uh, it's, you need to make sure you are saving the right plants. And for us was uh, a little bit tricky with this. Um, uh, our target species is Andromantis coralibe, and all of these are different species and they are sympatric species. So, needed to make sure we were propagating the right plant. Um, so based, uh, sorry about the format, uh, based on occurrences from GB and um, where we're working time ledgers, we use the max sense to build this niche model and it's just the probability of the presence of the species in certain areas. So in red, uh, it's a high probability and in dark blue is an uh, area less likely to harbor the species. And this is particularly useful for a species with a limited uh, distribution. This is the case of Clavija Sante Marte. And during the course of the project, we were able to confirm the presence of the species in the northwest slope of the Sierra Nevada. And uh, this is a useful resource for 
continue conservation action. So next time we aim to explore the north and north slope uh, to confirm the distribution of the species. Um, then, uh, so relying on historical herbarium records, we and after ground fruiting activities, we uh, were able to confirm the species populations in some localities. In some cases, uh, areas were completely urbanized or destroyed. And in others, we were able to add some more uh, points. Some more um, we, re we review herbarium specimens and we established these technologies and we were able to confirm these uh, technologies with uh, periodic visits to wild populations. And this very useful and made our uh, field trip more efficient. So we knew what we were looking at at the time. And so we collected seeds from all of these species and we cleaned some for storage in our seed banks and we used others for propagation. And we are uh, doing uh, storage seed behavior experiments. And this is the case of Lividia puntata. And uh, as you can see, germination rates from 2023 last year were very high, 80%, really high. Uh, however, uh, the accession from 2016 uh, was really low. So it's a uh, concerning result. So we need to improve our storage facility. Um, okay, so we aim to propagate uh, 15,000 plants, and to do that, we made some uh, partnerships with regional nurseries. One uh, in La Guajira, in the northern part of uh, the Caribbean, with Fundación Iguaraya. Another one with uh, Forest Essence in Sierra Nevada, where, uh, where, uh, where we were propagating Clavija. Another one uh, in Baru Island. Selva uh, Mar, and also we were able to propagate the seven species in our research in the Botanical Garden. So we established a propagation protocol for the seven species, and we were able to uh, evaluate germination rates as well. That's uh, Pelicera ventami and Aspiosperma pollinator. So uh, Clavija Santa Marte. It turns out to be the most uh, challenging species. It uh, with very uh, low growth and low germination rates. So maybe Andrew, we may we can work on this species. Um, also, we did uh, community engagement with local communities, uh, focused on uh, creating awareness and building capacity. So uh, for planting action, so it was uh, really challenging to find suitable landowners that were willing to change the use of the plant. Uh, we, we did it, but it wasn't easy. And for some plantings in the late rain season, we use uh, these hydro keepers uh, that improve the chances of survival. And uh, we were able to enhance the conservation efforts for Felicia Ventami with a uh, partnership with the Naples Botanical Garden and the Association of Zoological Horticulture. We created a new living collection at the garden. You all are going to see that uh, tomorrow. Um, and so far, we have been able to submit almost publish uh, two um, new reptiles assessment for two mangrove species. Uh, we consider that the conservation efforts should be done in the whole ecosystem and not just in particular species. Uh, it's an integrated approach there. And also a conservation actions should include land acquisition because we need to have land to plant the plants we are propagating. So uh, 
we are doing an in situ established experiment for Peninsula Benzami uh, in a protected area in Baru Island. And um, yeah, I'm going to show a video to. administrar los recursos se van a acabar. Vamos a tener insuficiencia, por ejemplo, de agua, vamos a tener deficiencia o inseguridad alimentaria, seguramente algunas poblaciones no van a tener cómo alimentarse. Debemos cuidar el medio ambiente, ya que esta nos brinda todo, absolutamente todo. Todo lo que hoy tenemos es gracias a respecto a la naturaleza. El Jardín Botánico es una entidad de ciencia que se dedica a la investigación para la conservación de la biodiversidad del Caribe colombiano. Tenemos acá un vivero de investigación, tenemos un herbario y tenemos las colecciones vivas en donde estamos enfocando la conservación ex situ de especies amenazadas. Mañana vamos a hacer un experimento con el piñuelo. Resulta que de esa planta no se sabe nada. Entonces nosotros la propagamos en el vivero, allá en Barú, y ahora vamos a ver dónde se puede sembrar. Vamos a visitar el proyecto de manglares. Vamos a ir a la isla de Balú, muy cerca del jardín botánico, donde tenemos un vivero satélite, donde propagamos una especie de manglar muy particular. Ese mangle se, se le llama el mangle piñuelo y era conocido especialmente de la región pacífica, donde forma ex, muy extensas poblaciones que aún por ser extensas, no por ser extensas, no dejan de estar amenazadas. Vamos a tomar 150 de estas plántulas y vamos a hacer unas parcelas de investigación, sembrándolas en sombra, en sol, en lugares húmedos, para hacer un seguimiento de las tasas de crecimiento y así después poder sembrar las 1500 o 1700 plántulas que tenemos en su lugar adecuado después de haber hecho este estudio de propagación en campo. El jardín botánico está en una búsqueda constante de aliados para poder desarrollar los proyectos y hemos encontrado un, un aliado maravilloso que es la Fundación Franklinia. La Fundación Franklinia se dedica a financiar proyectos alrededor del mundo para poder salvar o proteger especies que están amenazadas. Nosotros en este momento estamos a pocos meses de culminar un proyecto muy importante que tenemos con ellos, en donde estamos protegiendo y sobre todo fortaleciendo las poblaciones de siete especies que están amenazadas del Caribe colombiano.
lo importante es buscar alternativas para el desarrollo donde podamos integrar todas estas acciones de conservación para proteger la biodiversidad. Hay muchas cosas que son difíciles, este es un gran ejemplo de cómo se puede reforestar. Entonces acá tenemos unas plantas que se sembraron en el 2018. Esta era una zona donde antes se usaba mucho para cultivos de pan coger y con el tiempo se fue reemplazando por esta cobertura de, de bosque. So, uh, that was also a brief introduction for, uh, about the garden. We are going to see all that tomorrow. <laughs>